What's up guys, Joe with DIY Cold Plunge. This is another topic of frequent debate and discussion inside my Facebook group, and that is how to run your entire cold plunge system. Things like what should all go on timers, what's more efficient, and just best overall. Again, there's a lot of debate and discussion on this, so I just wanna provide my two cents, and hopefully you can make a better informed decision on how to run yours. What I will outline here is what I have personally used, had success with, and honestly what I think is the best option for everybody out there. Whether you agree or disagree with what I'm about to say, let's keep the discussion going down in the comments. Let me know how you run your system, what works for you, and your logic and justifications on why. If you want to know what parts I believe are best to use, I have a free parts and components guide. You can download it. The link is in the description below. And now that all that's out of the way, let's dig in. Starting with the pump. This should run 24 seven, not on a timer, none of that business. It should run continuously. I see far too many people try to game their systems by using timers and smart plugs. And in my opinion, it's just the wrong move and it can only lead to issues. And the fact that these pumps are designed to run 24 seven and are so cheap to run, it really makes no sense. So let's talk about the potential problems that go along with running your pump on a timer hypothetically. In my experience, stagnant water, even if it's in intervals on a timer, will lead to unsanitary and cloudy water, even if you have a filtration and sanitation system in place. In terms of wear and tear on your equipment, the startup cycle on these pumps is a lot harder on the equipment than it is just to run it 24 seven. Again, they're built to run continuously, so let them do what they were made to do. And overall, the last drawback on putting your pump on a timer is that it's kind of the core of your whole system. If your pump isn't pumping, your chiller is not going to function correctly, your ozone and your venturi is not going to work properly, and everything kind of crumbles from there. So overall, it's just more hassle to make sure that everything is lining up and timing out the way that you want it to. So to make it simple, just run your pump 24-7. Again, the only upside that I can think of is you maybe save a couple bucks per year, but that's at the expense of making sure that everything else goes right which to me just isn't worth it. Next, let's talk about the chiller. There is not a single manufacturer out there that recommends putting the chiller on a timer. And in fact, there's many manufacturers and customer service reps that will actively say not to put their chiller on a timer. So don't do it. Let the chiller regulate itself. It has a built-in temperature regulator. It'll kick on and off to maintain whatever temperature you set it to. If you're thinking you wanna put your chiller on a timer to save money, invest in better insulation. That will be the single biggest thing that cuts down on cooling costs. And you probably have a set temperature that you like to do your plunges at. So just set it and let it do its thing. I have a hard time believing that a chiller that kicks on three times a day to cool the water a total of 10 degrees has any cost difference than a chiller that will kick on once per day that's on a timer to chill that water that same 10 degrees. The key factor is how well your tank will hold temperature on its own. One thing that you can do instead of going the timer route is customizing the dead band setting on your chiller and making it only kick on once per day. Most manufacturers have a default setting of about two degrees as their dead band setting on the chiller when it ships to you. And that means basically if you set your chiller to 40 degrees, it will cool it down to 40 and then not kick back on until it hits 42 degrees. And then it will take it back down to 40 over and over again in that cycle. What you can do is figure out how much temperature loss your tank has. And say your tank again loses 10 degrees per day, you can set your dead band setting to 10 degrees and over the course of the day, the water will rise, get to that 10 degree mark, bring it back down in one shot. This hypothetically will reduce wear and tear on the compressor in your chiller and could be a good option if you want to go this route. Again, these are all things you can do if you want. I personally haven't messed with my dead band settings at all and everything's been just fine. So long story short, mess with the dead band interval. Don't put your chiller on a timer. Only bad things can come of it. Moving on to ozone. This is the one thing that I believe should be on a timer. You should set it to 30 to 60 minutes per day using just an inexpensive Christmas light timer and have your ozone run for that 30 or 60 minute period. And I personally set it to a time that's about an hour after my normal plunge time. So the ozone is running after I'm already out of the tub for the day, hit it 60 minutes, kick off and have almost a full 24 hours just for the rest of the plumbing system to run and cool and filter before I get back in. That has been the best solution for me. You'll have to experiment for yourself, whether you're more on the 30 or 60 minute side to keep your water clean and clear. If you have more people plunging in your cold tub than just you, it's probably gonna have to run longer. 
But again, experiment with it, keep your ozone on a timer, and figure out what's best for you. The last electrical component that I have in my builds is an LED light. And not that there's really anything to touch on here, but it has an air switch that you can manually push on and off. And that's how I do it. I don't mess with the timer on a light. That covers everything in the entire build. Let your pump run 24 seven, use the programming in your chiller to regulate it the way that you want it to, and keep your ozone on a timer for 30 to 60 minutes or more, depending on what works best for you. So that's my two cents. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this and your logic and justifications around why. If you wanna know my parts for recommendations list, you can download that at the link in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next video.